I was seven years old when John Lennon released Happy Christmas, War Is Over, essentially a protest song about America's involvement in Vietnam. Christmas and war, they seem so at odds with one another, but let me recount to you a story of when they came together in the context of a football match. The talismanic Brazilian icon Pelé coined the phrase football, the beautiful game. I suppose we've all got an opinion about that, but football stadiums certainly are places of adoration and even worship. Probably the reason why Wembley is known as the cathedral of English football. Okay, so let me take you back to Christmas 1914 and that famous festive football match that took place during the Battle of the Somme. A few weeks earlier, Sir Edward Grey, the British Foreign Secretary, had stood on the steps of Whitehall and said this, the lights are going out all over Europe. Two world wars and more than a century later, nothing seems to have changed. The Western Front was a defensive line for two opposing sides throughout a conflict that unleashed havoc without precedent and death on an industrial scale. It ran for 450 miles from the northern coast of France to the Swiss border. On Christmas Eve 1914, British troops standing in a frontline trench heard Stille Nacht or Silent Night coming from the German trenches. They picked up the song in English before both sides climbed out into no man's land, shook hands, exchanged cigarettes and cognac, took photos of one another and played football. My guess is that it was a hard-fought nil-nil draw with England going out to Germany on penalties. It's happened a few times since. The festivities didn't last very long before both sides parted company once again, crossed the lines and returned to their respective trenches and picked up their guns in time for Christmas Day. A strange moment now lost in history where war was suddenly overrun by peace and the guns along the Western Front fell silent. Well, for 90 minutes plus injury time at least. As Christmas approached the following year, not much had changed in terms of that war, but sentries were now guarding both trenches with orders to open fire on their own men should a return match be attempted. Whatever the festive season is gonna look like for you and me and whatever pressures it may bring, our lives are a far cry from Christmas 1914. Let me remind you of how the Bible describes the events of that very first Christmas when an angel appeared to a group of humble shepherds and spoke these very famous words. Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. Today in Bethlehem, a baby has been born. He is Christ the Lord. You will find him wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of angels appeared, singing glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace, to those on whom his favour rests. It seems for all their life experience out on that remote hillside, that group of shepherds had yet to find where true peace could be found. 2,000 years later and 2,000 miles away from where that event took place, we find ourselves approaching a very different type of Christmas, but perhaps with a very similar set of challenges. God's gift of his son and of himself into our broken, 
dislocated world is the greatest gift that any of us could ever receive. Jesus has given a number of titles in the Bible. One of them is Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. In the midst of fear, uncertainty and anxiety, you can know what it is to have God with you, not just at Christmas, but forever. Why not pray this prayer with me today? Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Emmanuel, God with us into the struggles and difficulties of today. Thank you for the eternal hope that is mine as I turn away from a life without you and receive your son, Jesus Christ, to be my Lord and my saviour. Amen.